in the earlier module we have set the basis for using the right terms and we have defined our motivation for going forward with the algebraic topological formulation. Now we will look at some of the topological aspects of this method. So we will start looking into a network. Let us say the network is something defined as it is shown in this graph. As you can see the arrows are pointing in both direction. There is no preferred direction in the case of the arrows. So this is called as unoriented graph or network. So unoriented because there is no preferred direction. So you can think of it like this. It could be like a network of train stations where the trains are running in both directions. So you can go from A to B to C to D something of this sort. The arrows are nothing but train connections in both directions. So A, B, C, D are the train stations and all the arrows are nothing but the directions in which the train runs. In the case of electromagnetics, we are not going to talk about unoriented graphs. We are going to talk about oriented graphs. So what are oriented graphs? So oriented graphs or networks have certain direction that are defined. So we will take the same one, we call it A, B, C and D. So we say we are defining A to B as this line. So there is nothing from B to A, but it is only from A to B and A to C, B to C, so on and so forth. So these are directions which we define and once we define that we have set certain assumptions and we are going to follow that in the next stages. So you might ask the question why do I have to choose the direction A to B but or not B to, C, B to A, you are free to do that. Once you do that your assumptions are fixed. So this is the basic starting step of the oriented graph. You can think of oriented graph like this. So you have let us say the starting point as a great great grandfather and then you have great grandfather and then you have grandfather and then parents and then children. So there is always a transition from one level to another level. It does not make sense to go on the other side. So in this case the network itself is structured in a natural way. But in the case of electromagnetic problems there is no natural forcing that has to be made. You can define a direction and then you are following that direction. So what I mean is you are free to choose the direction, there is no need for you to follow certain directional aspect. So regardless of whatever it is, you have to know that in the case of electromagnetic problem, we are going to look into directional graphs or oriented networks. But for the analysis, let us say we are using in this case an unoriented graph. This analysis is equally valid for a oriented graph, but for now let us assume that we are given a graph or a network. So topologist is a person who cannot make a distinction between let us say a coffee mug and a donut. You might, you might ask the question why it is so, is he blind? Actually there is some level of subtle information hidden in the statement. Topologically a coffee mug is same as a donut. Let me explain you this way. Let us say you have a coffee mug
So, in this coffee mug you have a natural hole that is here. So, topologist is a person who cannot distinguish between this and let us say you have a donut. So, what is happening here is this hole is preserved in both cases and this coffee mug can be transformed to donut and vice versa. So, this is called as homeomorphism. So, what we have in homeomorphism is if there is a hole in one model that hole will be preserved and there are no new holes that are created. So, in this case there is only one hole and this hole is preserved here. You might say there is a hole here, but actually it is not a hole. If there is a hole your coffee will be dripping out. So, this one is just a shallow there is no hole here, but here there is a hole for your finger to go inside and hold it. So, in a homeomorphism connected parts will stay connected, connected parts will stay connected and then holes are preserved. So, these are the two important things that you should remember. With this understanding let us look at this graph. Here what we are doing is we are transforming this network into something else. We are stretching it, we are you know contracting it, we are bending it, but A will always be connected to B and B will always be connected to D and D will always be connected to A and there is no new connections that are made and the entire set of thing stays the same. What is not same is the length L1, L2, L3 and L4 they can change and the surface area can change, but the points will always be connected and the holes will always be preserved. There is no new holes that are created, there is no new circles that are created something of that sort. So, with this understanding we are going to define some of the basic topological objects in this network let us see what they are. The first one is called as a zero simplex. We use the simplex instead of points, lines and surfaces because once we say let us say we have a k simplex k defines the dimension of that particular object. So, k can be 0, 1, 2 and 3. In fact, k can also go above 3, but for most of the practical applications we are interested only up to 3 dimensions. So, if k is 0 this is something we know these are points. If k is 1 these are lines or edges. We can also use the word vertices and edges and if k equal to 2 we call them surfaces and then here these are volumes. So, with one term with varying case we are defining all the different topological objects and that is what you are seeing here in this particular slide. So, if k equal to 0 you have a 0 simplex, k equal to 1 you have 1 simplex and k equal to 2 you have 2 simplex. As this case is about a 2 dimensional problem we are not talking about 3 simplex, but you can imagine a 3 simplex using the analogy what I have given you. So, regardless of what is the dimension of the simplex we will have the simplexes defined by a set of points. So, let me explain this here. A simplex is defined as 
a set of points S of i where i is the ith simplex and k is the dimension of the simplex is defined by a set of points. The point could be p naught, p 1, so on and so forth until p k. So, k simplex will have k dimension. So, you can really look at it from a very simple point of view. If you put k equal to 0, the ith 0 simplex will have only one point. Similarly, the ith 1 simplex will have two points Z p 0 and p 1 and the ith 2 simplex will have three points p 0, p 1, p 2 and the ith 3 simplex will have four points p naught p 1, p 2 and p 3. So, depending on the number for k, the number of points are going to change. So, this is quite easy to understand from the example what we have in our slide. So, here we are saying that the kth k simplex with i representing the original number because there can be n number of i's. For example, in the case of this problem, each of the point let us say a is equal to 1, b equal to 2, c equal to 3, d equal to 4. So, we can say the i will be here s of i will be equal to s a representing this point and it is 0 will be represented by that particular nodal value p naught. So, let us take a very simple example and then let us deduce various simplexes what we will have. So, in this case we are having a network represented by a set of nodes. So, what we have got here is we have got the values uh, represented by p naught, p 1, p 2, p 3 and p 4 which are here. Let us see here in this graph we have p naught, p 1, p 2, p 3, p 4, we have totally 5 nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nodes or vertices and we have totally 7 lines S 1, S 1, 2, S 1, 3, S 1, 4, S 1, 5, S 1, 6 and S 1, 7 totally 7 lines and there are 3 surfaces S 2 1, S 2 2, S 2 3. As you can see I am defining the direction of S 1 1 as going from P naught to P 1. I have forced this direction. I can also choose the opposite direction if I want and I have chosen it this way because I wanted to take example. There is no need for you to choose it in one direction. You can choose it also in the other direction, but once you choose it, this is fixed. Similarly, I have chosen the surfaces S21 as clockwise, S22 also clockwise, whereas S23 is in the anticlockwise. I have chosen it such that to prove that it does not really matter which direction I choose, but once I choose it, it is going to be fixed and it is going to affect the following developments. So, let us see how we can define the first node S 1 of 1. So, S 1 of 1 is a 1 simplex with the identity ordinal number 1. So, what I am talking about is in this case this line. So, this line is defined by the starting node which is P naught and the ending node which is P 1. Similarly, 
I can do the same thing for other nodes. Say for example, S 1 of 2 will be the starting node will be P 1 and then the ending node will be P 2. So, we can do that for other nodes and that is what we have done in this case. Let us see this in this example. So, we have defined all the 7 nodes accordingly. So, the first one is this one, the second one is here, the third one is here and so on and so forth. The first node will be the starting point, the second node will be the point where it is ending. So, with this understanding we can also write the same way also the surfaces. So, let us take the example of the surface S21. So, S21 is the first surface is I have 3 nodes that are going to come and I am going to go in the direction where I have defined P0, P1 and P3. So, let me write it down P0, P1 and P3. So, it is important to notice that why should I start with P0? I can also start with P1. So, if I start with P1 again going in the same direction what I will get is P1, P3 and P0. Similarly, the argument continues that I, I can also start with P3, P3, P0 and P1. What is important to see here is there is a cycle here. So, if I am going to change any of the nodes positions, the sign will be changing accordingly. In other words, if I say I am going to change the position of P naught and P 1, S 1 1 will be equal to let us say P naught P 1 I am going to change the position and I say P 1 P naught this is a very different simplex compared to this one. The length of it is going to be the same, but the direction is going to be opposite. So, if I change the positions once what I will get is the value of the thing will change also accordingly, where n is the number of times I am going to change. So, if n is 1, so this will be minus of so p naught p 1 is equal to p 1 p naught. So, what we are saying is the number of permutations, number of changes is here. So, since I have changed only once, so this will be a minus 1. So, if I am going to change it twice, for example, I am going to put it here and change this one, I will come back to the original one. So, in other words, what I am doing is if I say P naught P 1, I am transforming this here, what I will get is P 1 P naught and then I say I transform this again what I will get is P naught P 1. So, here I am transforming twice once and twice then the number will be n equal to 2. So, minus 1 power 2 is again the same simplex. So, it is a positive term. So, same thing same way we can see in this case what is happening is I put P naught if I change P naught to this position and I change P 1 to the first position, I am going to get this one. Similarly, in this case if I change to the second position and I am going to change 
p 1 to the last position I am going to get this one. So, that is the reason when we go in a cyclic manner regardless of where we start it is going to be the same simplex. In other words if I start from let us say a value which is given by let us take the same example. So, this is p naught this is p 1 and this is p 3. So, I said this is the direction of s to 1 I said s to 1 is equal to p naught p 1 p 3, but if I start with p 3 and then I go in the opposite direction. So, let us say I am going I am going to choose a different direction I will have p 3 p 1 and p naught the difference between these two is I have changed to only once what I am changing here is I put the p 3 in the beginning and this is the reason why what I am getting here is the negative one. So, these two things are negative let us call this one as s 1 2 dash what we get is s 2 of 1 is minus of s 1 2 dash. So, the transformation is if I go from anti clockwise to clockwise I am basically changing the orientation only once. So, that is what we have seen in this graph and what we have is we can write down all the expressions as we have shown here in the slide we can write down all the equations for S 2 1, S 2 2 and S 2 3. You can notice that in the case of S 1, S 2 1 and S 2 2 they are both in clockwise direction whereas S 2 3 will be in anti clockwise. So, I start with P 2, P 3 and P 4. So, I am starting from P 2, P 3 and P 4. I can also start from P 4, P 2 and P 3 likewise. So, with this being said we are going to see how we are going to define the, the transformation. So, this is something I already explained. So, when you change from P naught P 1 and you change it only once you will get the minus sign coming in. Similarly, in the case of uh, the surfaces you can do the same thing when it is even number of rotations you will get the same thing. So, with this being said let us go and discuss a concept called as chains. So, basically so far we have been discussing about simplexes, simplexes are topological objects, but we are going to talk about a concept called as chain. The chain like in the case of simplexes also has a dimension. So, we can call a k chain. So, if we are talking about a chain of points it is a 0 chain. Similarly, if you are talking about a chain of lines this is or edges so on and so forth. So, what is actually chain is nothing but let us say you have you have topological objects this could be either a point or it could be let us say surfaces or lines whatever it is. I have just put the black box assume that this is a black box and what you have is it could have either points point 1, point 2, point 3 or you could have line 1, line 2 and line 3 or you could have surface 1, surface 2 and surface 3. In other words 
let us say we are talking about example where there are three points and uh, three line segments and three surfaces hypothetically. So, if I say I am going to connect certain amount of point 1 to certain amount of point 2 to certain amount of point 3. So, I am going to connect them in a way that I have certain weightage for what I am going to connect. So, if I am talking about a 0 chain, I am only going to connect points. If I am going to talk about one chain, I am only going to connect lines. If I am talking about two chain, only surfaces. So, we cannot combine points and lines in a chain. If it is a 0 chain, it has only points. If it is a one chain, it has only edges. So, similarly, in the case of a chain, as I told you, I said I will take certain amount of point 1, certain amount of point 2, certain amount of point 3. So, that certain amount is something called as a weighting function. So, this is something we have represented in this slide as A1. So, A1 for simplicity could be either 0 or 1. In other words, you can either have a point connected or not connected. So, A of i could be either 0 or 1. So, if it is 0, that point will not be connected or that line will not be connected or that surface will not be connected. If it is 1, it will be connected. So, what you are seeing is you have C of a chain. So, in the case of a simplex, we use the terminology to define a simplex as S k of i. We said the k is the dimension of the simplex and we put k as a, sub, a superscript, but in the case of a chain, we will use the k as a subscript and the ordinal number as the superscript. You will know the reason why I am doing that later on. For now, let us assume this is the way it is defined. So, C of k is equal to sum of all i's. So, i goes from 1 to let us say n a of i times s i of k. So, let us take a simple example consisting of a list of points in this slide. So, let us say we are talking about C naught. So, in the first case where k equal to 0, this is C naught and we have three cases A, B and C. In the first case A, we are talking about points which are scattered. So, these are the points we are talking about. So, C naught is a chain of those points which are highlighted. In the case B, we are only talking about instead of scattered certain points which are in two of the cells and the third case is you are talking about all the points in that domain. So, in other words you will see in the case A excluding those points which are selected whose weights are 1 all other points will have weights as 0 where a of that point here, a of this point will be 0, a i of this point will be 0. Similarly, in this case excluding for these points all other points will have 0. In the case of c all points will have weights as 1. Similarly, in the case here where we have talked about c 1 which is a one dimensional chain where we are talking about lines which are scattered and in this case they are together and in this case which is collectively all lines in that domain. Similarly, the two chain here is an example where we have a list of surfaces taken. Similarly, here we have a list of very closely related surfaces taken and here all the surfaces in the domain are taken. So, the idea should be clear for you by now A is the one which are used for that weighting. What we have now is, let us say we are interested in a domain which has let us say one simplexes. So, let us say we are talking about a coil and a coil which is 
bounded in this manner. So we have a coil which is bounded in this manner. Let us say the current is going in this direction and the current is going to come out in this direction. So this coil if it is so closely stacked in other words they are very closely connected can be seen as if they are going from one point to another point again and again. Right? If the coils are so closely stacked what we get is a kind of a very closely tightly packed coil and the points here will be defined. They are almost like co-located. So this is the example I am going to show you where you have the coils are going to go through points over and over again and the starting point is defined and the ending point is defined. That is what you are going to see here in this slide where you see the starting point and the ending point are defined and I have shown them to be separate here but they are actually on the top of each other. What you see here is there is a direction in which it goes and comes out. So S11 is defined here, S12 is defined here, S13 is defined like this. So you can see if I have a chain of C1 of 1 what I am having is A1, A2, A3 and A4 are all having weights of 2 because they are all in the same direction. So let us say this is A1, this is A2 and A3. So they are all having the same weights. Similarly in the case of C12 if I choose a different direction instead of going in this direction I go in the opposite direction of the defined path I will have A1, A2, A3 and A4 as minus 2. Actually in this case you will not have A4 you will have only A1, A2 and A3 because the points are A1, A2 and A3. So we can say we are only going to talk about A1, A2 and A3 in the case of the first example. So let me write it down here. So basically we are talking about A1 is equal to A2 equal to A3 equal to A4. So A4 is not required. So it is basically A1 is equal to A2 equal to 2 in the first example where I go this way and the direction is the same as the direction which I have already chosen. So this is C1 of 1 like I have mentioned here and the other one is I go in this direction which is C2 of 1 I am going the opposite direction. If I go in the opposite direction I am going to go in the direction opposite to that of what is already defined. So I will have A1 equal to A2 equal to A3 equal to minus 2 because there are two times I am crossing the same path but in the opposite direction so I will have a weight of minus 2. In the first case it is plus 2. Similarly in this example you will see if I choose the direction as this way what is happening is in the first case in one type one case I am going in one direction but while coming back I come in the opposite direction. So that is why my value of A1 will be 0 in this case because once I go in this direction while I come out I come in the opposite direction they will cancel out. In the case of S A2 the value will be same as before because I am only going in one particular direction and the value is equal to 1. Only the value of A1 will be 0 because once I go here and once I come back. But if I choose the opposite direction you will see A1 will still be 0 because in one way I go in the direction and the other way I go in the opposite direction. But in the case of A2, A3 and A4 the value will be minus 1 because I am going in the opposite direction as that of the defined direction. So with this we have come to the point where we have defined the concept of chains and we have defined 0 chain, 2 chain, 3 chain and so on and so forth. In the next lecture we will start defining some of the other concepts like 
code chain and so on and so forth. Thank you.